I'm doing now is with a regular makeup brush, I'm putting your eyeliner on the way you apply it, pretty much. And uh, we're just going to taper it a little, flare it just a little bit, and we're going to only go between the lashes down here. Okay. Now we go between the lashes all the way across, but we go a little bit above the lashes on the last half. All right. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds good. I'm going to use a color called Black Suede, especially between your lashes. And then on the bottom, I think I'm just going to go with a color called Brown Eyes. Okay. We use a needle that looks like a brush, doesn't look like a needle. Now I'm just starting right here in your eyelashes here. And this is called a three slope. So it's like a slanted makeup brush, little tiny, tiny. And we can just use a single needle down here in this. But it's still a nice, um, what we call eyelash enhancement. So it's an eyeliner you think of is above the eyelashes. But an eyeliner without putting color between the lashes uh, isn't as rich. I'm just going to slip in a little of this brown eyes down here. It's kind of tickles. Yeah, we're going to have a two-tone eyeliner. We can always darken. We can even lighten colors. I'm doing little dots just where your little hairs are here. I'm not doing a line, okay? Okay. We can always add. I just don't want to... Uh, over. Yeah. No overkill. Underkill is better. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just going to... So we've got our first little what we call a quick pass in, putting on a little topical anesthetic. It's called tag. Topical <laughs> anesthetic gel. We use a gel near the eye so it doesn't run into the eye. Okay. Okay, so we've started on the left eye. Now you can relax. And I'll work on this eye. I always uh, tell my students to train the brain and that's why we uh, paint on the, sort of like we apply your makeup with our pigment mm -hmm. before we start um, implanting it. So It's actually good. Mm -hmm. It lets us see if we're off mark or if we're okay. Or So we're going to train my brain, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. Now, when you leave here, you are going to feel like there's too much color, Pam, because, as you know, if you cry or sneeze or have hay fever, um, something gets in your eye, how fast your eyes can swell. Uh -huh. Even wake up puffy in the morning sometimes. Uh -huh. um, but the swelling will go down, and you'll actually go, oh, I miss it. You know, so at first it's surprising because it's like an inflated tire instead of a flat tire. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it, we can always add. Okay, I'm just going to put in just a little bit of color right there. There's little um, tiny, tiny needles. Like a little tiny, tiny brush is just applying your makeup in the dermal layer of your skin, uh -huh. and that's why it lasts. Huh. Because if it were too shallow, it would come off. If we went in too deep, the color would be in the muscle. You wouldn't be able to see it. It'd be there, but it wouldn't do you much good. 
that little crackling sound you hear uh -huh. is what I call the Rice Krispies sound. Uh -huh. That means we've hit your sweet spot and that's exactly uh -huh. the layer we want to be. This upper outer lash is my guideline. We, we flare it out and up just a little bit from there. So that's what opens your eye. Okay. Just a little flare, a little wider there. Okay, we're going to go to the bottom here. We're just making a quick pass here, getting on some numbing. How how is your? Uh, are you comfortable? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. We've gotten in a nice beginning coat of color with that three slope needle. Okay. And I think you're gonna like it, but we've just got to. even it out, make it, you know, little details. That's why I wear this headpiece, because I can see things three to six times magnification uh, compared to it, the bare eye. So, since we're doing micropigmentation, and they started off doing this under microscopes, literally, uh -huh. for around the eye, and uh, micropigmentation, so, then um, we realized microscopes got in the way. So we put the magnification on sort of our eyeglasses and like that. Okay, we can relax there. Let's go back here. Holding the eye can sometimes uh, be the most important part. It determines the safety of your eye. You know, when you have a nice grip, it also determines how much color you can get in. Mm. So that's why you feel that pressure. That's if you move, I move, and nothing happens. Mm. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> I'm just tapping in a little color down here. You don't want a whole lot on this lower lid mm -mm. because um, you only have one row of eyelashes down here. Whereas on top you have three to three and a half mm. rows. So you can go between the eyelashes. So it's by definition thicker on top. And it's meant to be that way. It's just like your upper lip is smaller than your lower lip.
I can always add. So, you know, when you come back for your touch-up, mm -hmm. you can just say, you know, I, I, I like it. You know, I want a little bit more. And we'll do a little bit more. Okay. But, um... Just marking your makeup there. This angled needle is so much better than a round needle because it just lets you put on your makeup like you'd put it on at home almost. It's That's what I'm excited for, uh -huh. not worrying about uh -huh. putting it on. Yeah. The skin is real elastic around the eye. Sometimes it's hard to get a grip. So when you come back, you may have some little areas that are uneven or need color. It's amazing that we can actually tattoo eyelids. <laughs> I know. If you think about it. It's the I mean, greatest it's like, thing. Yeah. Especially those that are allergic like you are or yep. your hand's not steady or you just Yep. can't see what you're doing anymore. I say if you have to put on glasses to put on your makeup, it's time. I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> have a little bruising, which is a good thing. It's not bleeding at all, but bruising is a sign that you're in just the right level where all those little di delicate vessels are. If you got bleeding, then you're too deep. See? Mm. So bruising is little tiny dermal blood vessels and there we go how's that feel mm, nice yeah that eye's done yay oh, when do i come mm. back let's see today's april 6th. 6th you can come back before you go if you want to okay it take i want you to wait you know at least four weeks okay that's how long it takes for our body to reorganize you know itself and heal the skin layers, the epidermal-dermal junction, we call it. Okay. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter to me actually. I just need to see it open when I'm doing these little flares here. Mm. Make sure they're going, you know, sloping the correct upward, mm. outward, you know, open your eye instead of down and out, which would not have that good mm. effect. Okay. Just putting a little bit between these little lashes. Not above them. Until we get up here. Okay. And we 
So just remember, everything's going to be a little exaggerated today. It's going to look like a tire that you've, you know, put <laughs> air into, and then when it comes down, comes down real quickly, even sometimes the same day, certainly within a couple days. Are you okay? Are you uh -huh. okay? Okay. Yep. Next time won't take as long either because it will just the the, the color will be in there and we'll be frosting the cake. Mm -hmm. Today we're baking the cake. Yep. Always takes longer to bake the cake than it does to frost the cake. Yep. See we don't we wanna be gentle to the skin even <laughs> though you know we wanna dance on the skin. So when I see you in about four weeks, uh -huh. um, uh, then big I'll, smile. I'll just, <laughs> I hope so, but <laughs> I'll be really focusing on little detail stuff. A uh -huh. little thicker here, a little higher there, a little, you know, missing color there maybe. And it's only missing because I didn't put it in, because this technique, the color does stay. But uh, it's still important because if I put, every dot is important. If I put a dot on your nose, mm -hmm. a black dot, then you realize how important that dot is. Mm -hmm. And uh, you say, oh, you know, it's okay, it's not, and I say, it's better to get every dot in, you know, that you can. Just taper that in just a little bit right there. Now that I can see both eyes. In uh, permanent makeup, you don't want to what's called overwork the skin. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not totally perfect, it's better than if you overwork it because if you overwork it, the color can come out, you get scabby. Now, you should get a little flaking on day two or three, mm -hmm. like little fish food flakes, but um, you shouldn't get anything really, um, no scabbing. Okay. And don't pick at it. Don't, you know, if it itches a little, that's okay. It'll come off like little flakes of dried makeup or mascara. Like the, the fish flakes will be dark because, you know, it's the color of the color that I put into your skin. But some of it's on the skin and it's the color that is on the skin that comes off sort of like a suntan, sunburn, mm -hmm. it, that color comes off. Okay. So it's, it's not a pale flaking, it's little pieces of color and you say, oh, the color's coming off. No, just the color that's not deep enough is coming off. Okay. Okay, let's pay attention down here. You've got three colors when you leave, if not four. You've got color that's in the skin, color that's on the skin, and you've got little bruising blood drops that come up. And those go away. The color on the skin goes away. So you're just left with the color that was in the skin. Hmm. Yeah, so that makes sense, you know, if mm -hmm. you have a sunburn. It, comes off and okay we're closing in here these little corners of the eye are a little um, challenging to get um, so we have to go real slowly uh -huh.
Just remember, your eyes are going to be puffy today. It's going to look too thick. But that's just because the inner tube is puffed up, you know. Mm -hmm. If you even rubbed your eyes or cry, they'll puff up. So you can imagine having your your color putting in there. They're going to puff up. That's that's a good thing. That's normal. Mm -hmm. But it's also different because when people go to a makeup artist and they they uh, they go to a makeup artist, they. Uh, leave and they look great and they go to their wedding or their whatever and they come <clears> home and they wash it off and it, this will not wash off. <laughs> you can't hurt it. You can shower tonight. We're going to give you what's called an aftercare, an aftercare ointment to um, um, actually, it actually does help in healing and uh, the body of course is does its thing, you can't rush it, but uh, you can't help it. This little corner here up on this little single needle. I, I always tell people, I say, are you a perfectionist? And they say, oh, yes, I'm a perfectionist. And I said, well, you've got a problem because... I'm not. <laughs> because perfectionists can get into trouble by trying to do too much. And they actually take out color instead of putting in color. So. And you can wear your own makeup, you can, um, you can't hurt it. Treat yourself to some new uh, mascara, if you're going to wear any mascara. Okay. Because, you know, makeup gets dirty. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I don't uh, wear that much, so it lasts me a really long time. Yeah, but it's better just to get on there. Open, look up, okay, then just clean up your face and then we're going to put on a, uh, we're going to put on a nice cold pack, are you happy it's all done? Yes, glad I made it, I'm glad I didn't really freak out. Yeah. If anything's uneven, we'll, we'll straighten it up next oh, yeah. time. We're going to put the cold packs on your eyes. Okay. And uh, let you cool down. 